Yongno almost made a perfect lens. This is 33mm f1.4 for APS-C cameras. Hi, it's Jimmy Cheng here from Red35 and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to have a look at Yongnuo's brand new 33mm f1.4 ultra-fast standard prime for APS-C format cameras. And yes, I have used Yongnuo lenses before but mostly on the micro four-third platform. And for those who already know their brands, well they kind of produce all sorts of things from accessories, lighting, to all the way to camera lenses. And I must say that their lenses has always been um, Average. <laughs> Although I was quite impressed with the 45mm f1.7 Mark II that I used on the Micro Four Thirds platform, I thought that that would be a quite an okay lens, and uh, you know, for the price, it's not a bad choice either. But the 33 that I got right here for the APC camera, I actually thought they might have just got it right. So before I continue this review, just to let you know that this is not a sponsored video and Yongno did send this lens to me for reviews but I can say whatever the heck I want after using it and here it is. So before I continue the lens uh, features and things like that, let's just have a look at the overall construction of it, the build quality of this particular lens. Well, I have to say for the very first time, I would say that it feels like a proper premium lens from China. Um, this is something I wouldn't usually say for Yongno lenses before because a lot of the Michael Forthard lenses I tried before, they're all plastic. This is metal, very metal, and it's quite hefty one as well. So I, I think it feels good. Even the lettering on this lens is all engraved, not printed. So this is something I, a little bit unusual for Yongno. Uh, there are lots of buttons here. There are two rings, one is focusing, one is a customized ring that you can add custom or you can assign anything to it from aperture to exposure compensation to anything that you wish to. There are a couple of function button A and B here and also a rather unusual AM FM switch here which you can also customize for something else. So it's a very customizable uh, lens which is really again unusual. One thing I was expecting to see is some sort of weather ceiling but in fact there is absolutely none here so that means this lens cannot be used in any sort of wet situations especially in our lovely British weather although not like today it's quite sunny today but overall you know this is not a bad lens at all I mean I have tried it in my professional shoes I found it to be extremely really good I mean, I'm gonna to come to the image quality in a minute but overall construction again you know I can't fault it I can't fault it at all so well done Yongno for producing for, for the first time a premium lens from you guys so what about the handling of it? Well, this is a standard lens, a standard prime for APS-C formats. So when it mounts on my lightweight ZFC, it feels good. It feels rather, you know, balanced, you know, which I kind of like using this particular lens with the ZFC here. Uh, uh, nothing to complain, although this is slightly longer than, let's say, uh, uh, the 50mm 1.8 on the ZFC. I mean, that's a standard prime, a full frame standard prime. So that is a tiny lens. Compared to this, this is almost doubling the length. So it's not a particularly compact lens, so to speak, but having a 1.4 aperture, yeah, I can forgive that. But overall, handling is as good as you can get for 1.4 prime. For my big wall, the central sharpness is already amazing at 1.4. It's just so sharp that you can really use it at 1.4 all day long. But stopping down a notch or two at 2.8, you are gonna get really, really punchy results. Peak performance arrives at 5.6 before diffraction comes in at f11. Edge performance is equally strong as well. At 1.4, there is a hint of softness there between 1.4 and to 1.8. But by F2, you are getting edge to edge sharpness, which is very, very good result. And peak performance once again at 5.6 before diffraction comes in at F11 again. The overall aesthetics, rendering, and bulker quality from the Yongno 33mm 1.4 is simply good. Yes, I'm not joking. I'm really happy to use this lens all day long on my ZFC and uh, it's really that great. And I think 
Um, for the price, there isn't anything close to in terms of performance. Um, it, it, it just really good. The creamy uh, bokeh is really soft, and I really like to use it for, let's like, say, half length portrait for my kids, for instance. And uh, yeah, just general aesthetic, it's just good. I wouldn't say that it's uh, very modern, like Sony lenses or Nikon lenses or Canon lenses for the last two to three years, but definitely on par when it comes to uh, the overall aesthetic, compares very, very well in the Nikon or Sony lenses back in the 2010 time. So that is very impressive. Chromatic aberration, flare and vignetting is another strong point of this particular lens here. And I don't know what they've done to it, what, what sort of design they adapted to. Seriously, I can't see any chromatic aberration shooting wide open and 1.4 in all sorts of lighting situations here. I did use this lens for my portrait shoots and uh, shooting all kinds of lighting conditions like strong backlit sunlight, high contrast scenes. I, I can't see any. It's it just good, <laughs> full stop. So impressive there. Um, the, as you can see from my sample images, it just there's nothing I could complain about. Um, the vignette, yes, there is a little bit of vignette at 1.4, but like most of the ultra fast or fast primes, uh, you do see some uh, uh, vignettings at the dark corners between 1.4 to f2 without any lens profile adapted to it. So once again, you know, uh, the, this is well done. You know, this is optically corrected, so uh, you, you don't you don't need to, to worry too much about it because corrections is very easy in post. Uh, something that I wouldn't say destructive at all. Um, finally, flare is another strong thing as well. I mean, there is a little bit, but you know. All lenses are if you really push it to that limit. Um, I would say this on par with a lot of the lenses between two to three hundred pound kind of uh, price range. So I would say exceptional, but certainly very acceptable. There is one thing I would like to complain about the Yongnuo 33 mm 1.4, and that is the distortion. And this lens does exhibit a rather severe barrel distortion that needs to be corrected in post. In Lightroom, I have to crank up to plus six to combat the distortion. And by then, you're gonna lose some pixels. And I have to increase the scale by about 4% to 5% to combat that situation. And that means that when you come to framing a subject in stills or videos, you need to kind of step back, including more than you needed for the scenario so that you don't lose anything when it comes to post-production. Now, let's talk a little bit about AF speed and video features because this lens is labeled as a hybrid lens and it does have some rather quirky and unusual features I'm gonna to talk to you guys about. Well, first of all, using step motors is a good start. It does make the lens focuses very quietly and has that premium feel, which I totally like. And so photography, it's perfectly fine. It's fast enough to do anything that I throw the lens to, tracking my subjects moving in and out of the frame, running towards me, away from me, is fast enough to, you know, I would say to have 90 to 95% hit rate in that particular scenario. So that's no problem there whatsoever. But for video, is another thing. Right, first of all, yes, if you use it for autofocus, once again, it's fast enough to track your subjects, you know, things like that, it's no problem whatsoever. But if you want to switch to the manual focus, well, that's when the quirky thing starts because <laughs> if you somehow get this as well, this is the Yongnuo's remote control Bluetooth enable uh, follow focus module for this particular lens right here. Yeah, that means you can actually remotely control the focus away from the camera so long that is within the Bluetooth range. Um, so I'm not entirely sure the usefulness of this because, well, unless, Let's put it that way, unless Yono has other lenses that can utilize these features right here. But at the moment, they only have the 33 millimeters. So I don't see the particular usefulness of this particularly because if you want to switch lenses, that means you have to take this off from your cage or from whatever you're mounting this onto. It becomes useless. So you might as well just use it the traditional way, put a gear ring right here, use whatever photo focus module options or other features that you may have or for your rig, for instance, to use this lens in manual focus terms. So um, at this moment in time, I don't think this is as useful as you normally have think about, because unless they have two or three, maybe four other lenses that can utilize these features, I just don't see the usefulness of this just yet. And another thing that is rather quirky and weird is, well, this lens claimed to be able to use external power source. Yeah, there's a USB port right here, not only for firmware updates, but also for power, uh, that, which is a little bit weird. I mean, I have no idea or can imagine what sort of scenario where you want to power the lens externally. Yeah, you let me know in the comment section below because I have no idea why you would do that. But anyway, so this is kind of weird, but um, in terms of overall air speed, 
it's good. It's fine. I mean, I, I don't see any deficiency here for at least for uh, things I do anyway as a portrait guy and general documentary filmmaking. I, I can actually use this lens, no problem whatsoever. So this is my take on the Yongno 33mm f1.4 prime lens for APS-C cameras. What do I think of it? And also, you know, do I recommend it? I would say yes, because for the price, I mean, uh, in the UK, I think it's around about £200-ish, you know, it's not particularly cheap, but it's not expensive either for a 1.4 Prime, which is fantastic. And it does have a lot of features and that currently may not be as useful, but maybe perhaps in the future when Yongno does release other lenses, other Primes that can, let's say, use these, uh, utilize these follow focus modules, then may, you may have a set of lenses that you may want to adapt to your camera set um, for you to, you know, basically maximize these wireless features that they're trying to impose right here. But as a lens itself, I think the optical quality lives up to, uh, uh, you know, to my expectation at least. You know, I think it performs well. Uh, the only thing, like I said already, is the distortion. You know, as long as you understand the lens and you know when to uh, adjust the setting when it comes to framing, you should be totally fine. But sharpness good, punchy, contrasty, colorful, high resolutions, and I think this lens is, is just great. It's probably the best Yongno lenses I've seen so far. So well done for that. Uh, for that, and I would recommend it. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think about Yongno, and uh, because they may actually have other lenses in the pipelines that are gonna be introduced later on this year. And I would like to also, once again, see more uh, Michael Forth lenses from these guys, because they've really done some. I just want to see more from them. And uh, they've already done zoom, they have some primes, and uh, yeah, it, some more lenses will be quite cool. But I know that they're now you know, moving up market a little bit more, so they're gonna start producing APS-C, perhaps even full frame lenses in the near future. So, until then, I would know. So uh, let's hope that they do and I will have some more <laughs> lenses from them to show you guys. Anyway, let, uh, remember leave the comment section and uh, about your thoughts on this lens and you know what to do now. Thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking and of course, gear review. Until next time, bye for now. Peace. Ooh. Summer is definitely here, which I am totally enjoying in my garden. It's looking good and the grass is green and I'm just quite happy to sit out here instead of sitting in the kitchen, right? Uh, anyway, I do enjoy Yongno 33mm 1.4 and in fact, I, mean, I actually think that you know, it is the best 33mm or standard primes kind of focal range for my ZFC right here. Um, the, yeah, I know that I previously reviewed your uh, Sirius Nightwalker, which they also have a 33 millimeters, but that is a 1.2. Uh, however, that lens is definitely not as sharp as this one. This is actually sharper and performs better at 1.4 range. Um, so if I want to take it out for a spin, you know, just for a day shoot, uh, just want to take one standard lens, I'll probably take this one instead of the Sirius Nightwalker 33. However, you know, and uh, you'll not currently only have this focal range here. I mean, I would like to see others that, you know, has the same feature, same sharpness, same optical performance, and uh, to create a set, maybe like a wider and a tight, tighter, like 23, maybe a 56, and that will be kind of like completing the range uh, of prime lenses for general photography purposes. So that will be pretty good. Um, but until then, I wouldn't know. I simply wouldn't know. And uh, uh, I do hope that they're gonna continue to innovate, continue to do something cool. Uh, I've met them in person in the photography show earlier this year. And uh, uh, they do, you know, have some quirky stuff coming up. So uh, let's, let's see what else they're gonna come up with. <laughs> so anyway, uh, enjoy your sun, enjoy your, uh, wherever you are. And remember, photography is out there everywhere. You know, gonna take your camera, lens, just go and shoot. Have some shutter therapy. Very good. Until next time, I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.